Hey everybody, it's Matthew Rathbun, and in this video we're going to talk about how to manage home inspection items when they may be, well, a lot. Sometimes they're just a lot. And you and I are not general contractors, and so we want to work alongside our sellers to get those done. And to keep them on track, I've got a great system I've been using for years I'd like to share with you using Trello to manage those. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to the channel and please like the video. Those two things help me out a lot when creating this content and getting the word out about better ways to help agents in their practice. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump back in there. All right, so we're gonna jump in here and I'm gonna start with the final product and then show you how to create it and then assign it afterwards. And so I'm using Trello. Trello is uh, well known, it's been around for many, many years and uh, is easy for people to use. And so I use this with my consumer, my client engagement, have for many years. Um, Personally, for a command type system, which is this whole process of making a list of moving boards, uh, I'm a Notion user for most of my stuff that isn't being shared with others. And so you might want to balance the two and decide which is best for you. Um, what we're trying to do here is create a meaningful way to communicate with our sellers about and organize the home inspection repairs that they have made. And so you can see I have several lists here for them and uh, tasks that have been assigned for them. And this is gonna be the template we're gonna use and I'm gonna show you how to create and then assign. So let me show you the final product. The final product is that there is a list of repairs that they have agreed to in their contract to, to work on effect on behalf of the buyer's request. So they've agreed, this is after they've agreed in writing. So I send the seller a copy of that ratified uh, agreement with the repairs listed, as well as a email uh, link uh, to a video that I've created that explains how to use Trello in case they're unfamiliar. It's a very small portion of my clients have never used it. And most of them find it very easy and have some familiarity with it. Um, and I'll, I'll add a link to that video in the description of this video below so that you can uh, see what I'm sending my sellers. And it just explains the process to them. Each of these cards here is a repair, and as you can see, it allows us to communicate about where they are. So when they've ordered it with the contractor, when the contractor started the work, when they have completed the work, and in rare occasions, if there's a repair, they just can't get on the closing, they can move it here. And <clears throat> what we're doing here is creating these note cards that have inside a checklist for the seller to follow a communications pattern for them or place for them to leave comments or for me to leave comments, depending on who's uh, doing the work or keeping track of it. They can add photos of the work. They can uh, link to something related to it. They can add an attachment of something if they wish here. It has a due date as to when this task is to be done. Now for my standard contract in my primary market, the contract says the work has to be done seven days prior to closing. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a bit. Um, and so we are putting due dates here. And then at the end, again, once this is set up for them, um, we are assigning the seller. And so I can click on share. I can enter the seller's address here, make them a member. And when I do, it'll add, like I've added my wife here for um, training purposes, a little circle here. And I can drag this over let it go and it assigns them that card and then I can remove them from the card if I want to get rid of them or if it's my job to take care of that task. I'm also going to be able, once this is set up properly, to go to automation and click on email reports and then I get a, a board snapshot where I can again add the seller's information and email address, and they're gonna get an email, as am I, once a week talking about what repairs are, what status they're in, and this is a good visual cue for me and for the seller to see who's doing what and and what uh, where they're done. You can see over here on the right, an example of the very clean uh, uh, email they're gonna get showing the status of all the boards here. And so, for example, if I've got some moved over here in these different areas, and we go to, again, automation, email reports, and a broker a board snapshot, they're gonna get this email, as are you, showing what repairs need to be done and where they are. Now, here's what we're trying to do with this. 
Um, a lot of sellers at the end of a transaction show some for frustration with the lack of communication or middle of the transaction, lack of communication or clarity what's going on. And we want to bring clarity to this and provide a, a way to communicate um, well uh, with a visual cue and tracking what needs to be done in a meaningful way. Um, we, I understand that very often agents will do home inspection, coordinate home inspection repairs for their clients. I am not that agent. I am not a general contractor. I don't want the liability for it. I want responsibility for it. So I will share with them a list of vendors and there's other videos I talk about creating a vendor list and some of the risk and reward of doing that and then allow them to choose the vendors and do the repairs to the best of their ability. If they need help, they can call me, but I'm not coordinating contractors and painters and all that stuff for them. That's just a, uh, it's a wild west there. It's a lot of liability. So I'd rather them do it. However, I'm leaving room here that if I'm doing it, they can at least see where I'm at in each of those tasks at any time they want to log in and click the link or get that email once a week to show where I'm going. Either one of those systems uh, or either one of those processes works in this system. So let's talk about how we create it. When you log into Trello, you're going to get here to this landing page and you're going to have your workspaces. Now, there is one feature that I'm going to talk about a little bit later that is available only if you pay for Trello. I do not. I use this um, just for a few things uh, with my clients. Again, I use other systems for me personally. Um, and you can see I have a household area where my wife and I share some things here until we migrated to a new system. I got my template board workspace down here, and then I've got the workspace for me as a person. I'm going to create a workspace, go into workspaces uh, here. Uh, you can see that I've got one for me as a person. I've got my family, and then I've got just templates I create like the one we're talking about now. I'm going to create create a uh, workspace and then name it the client's name. Some of you may be using this for more than one thing, or maybe you're working with an assistant and you're keeping track of the tasks. You can create a workspace for your client. Now, again, you can create X number, and I don't remember how it is, for free until you have to pay to upgrade Trello. And so uh, I'm you know, using it fairly sparingly because I don't want to pay for this. I've got other better systems for my personal productivity. This works great for what we're talking about today. So down here, you can see I've got the home inspection task list. So I've created this in templates, and this is just the, the template. And I'm going to share this or uh, create this uh, in another workspace. So it will be the client's name. And so once I've created this, I'm going to just save it under templates. When I want to use it for a seller, I'm going to click on these three dots over here. I'm going to create copy board. I'm going to choose the workspace, pretend that Matthew Rathbone's workspace is actually my seller's name, and I'm going to create um, Smith's Home Inspection Board, and that is going to duplicate that out of templates. This is the part that uh, I'm, this is my workaround that you can see is very easy to use the workaround for free. If you are using the paid version of, of uh, Trello, you can click on these three dots and click on make a template of this. And then you've got a template that's easier to deploy and you don't have to worry about like, you know, duplicating or overriding your, your workspace. I find that copy and make uh, to a new workspace is a, easy enough for me. I don't need to pay for that one feature. All right. So I'm going to go back now. I'm going to actually get rid of the, well, I will keep this for now. I'm going to go back now and we're going to create a new template. Now notice it says I have four remaining. Again, I'm on the free version so I can have X number of these. And I've got a post listing checklist, a post ratification with buyer checklist, a post ratification seller. I've got all these templates here that I use for those appropriate parts in the transaction. So I'm going to create a new board. And um, we're going to call this home inspection training. And I'm going to keep it in the templates workspace and it is visible to me in the workspace area. And I'm going to create the new board. Now, this is what you get as a clean board. And this is a very simple process here. I'm going to start with the visual elements. The snowy mountains are absolutely beautiful. I'd love, I'd love to be there camping for the weekend, but it's really too much going on in the background for me and for my clients. So I'm going to click on those three dots here to the right. There's magic three dots. I'm going to change background. 
and I've just uploaded a nice, simple wood background. I happen to like that. Uh, I'm going to leave that there. And then I'm going to add the lists. And so the first list is going to be agreed upon repairs. And you can add whatever you want. I like using the, the language. Um, precision language is a very important thing for me. The agreed upon, upon repairs is going to be the list of things that they've agreed upon, not work to be done or anything like that. I want to keep it very positive. You've agreed to do this. These are the repairs we're going to affect. And then um, contractor ordered. And again, you can do whatever you want with these lists. This is just mine in progress. And again, I've sent an email to the sellers with a video, about a three minute video explaining what these mean because without explanation, they may not work. Um, completed and cannot be completed prior to closing. Or again, whatever you want to put in there. Um, all right, and so these are the lists. And again, I've given explanation of what these lists mean to us, to the sellers in the email I sent out explaining the task. Now that I've created the lists, I'm just going to create a card. And in this card, I'm going to put um, sample repair. We'll put repair one. One. Now, I'm not going to create repair two yet. I'm going to go back into the card, and I'm going to... Um, add a couple things here. So I'm going to add a checklist, for example. And so I'm going to checklist uh, items to be completed. And I'm going to add, that's my master checklist. And I'm going to have these subtasks that need to be done. Um, contact and um, order contractor service if applicable. And what I explained to my sellers is if you're doing the work, if we've agreed in the contract that the seller can do the work themselves, they can just replace themselves with that. And then schedule repair date. Um, add uh, receipts. Or we're going to say attach receipts. Once completed. And then move to completed. Okay, whatever you want to do there. Now, something need to be aware of is they have this little clock here. So you could assign a different time or date for these items to be completed by subtask. However, you have to pay for that service. So I find that really, I just need the whole thing done by a certain date. So I'm going to use the date element over here, which is part of the free service. And so I'm going to go to this date and I'm going to say, you know, in our, our regional contract, my primary, primary contracts, the repairs have to be done seven days prior to closing. So we're going to say this closing happens on, um, well, actually we are, today is January 1st, 2024. So let's say that closing is to be done on Friday the 2nd. Uh, I'm not going to do the math. Let's just say they have to be done by, the repairs have to be the 28th. So I'm going to click on the 28th. I'm going to add a due reminder um, two days before and then hit save. Now I have added these tasks to be, done, to be done and the due date. Now we're building a template, so you would not put the due date in the template per se, but you would assign it once you copy the template and assign it to the seller. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the X here because I've completed the work here. Instead, and this is why I wanted you to finish one card before you do the next, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on copy and then put repair two, because remember we're building a template here and it gives me a uh, copy and a repair three and what it did is it copied over everything. Now it, in this case, it copied over the due date, which you would want to do once you created this board for your client, not for your template. I did that just to show you. And then you've also copied over the individual tasks. Now, when you copy, it does move the new version to the top. I've numbered mine repair one, two, and three, but generally we don't prioritize which order the repairs have to be done for our seller. So I wouldn't worry about that too much here. Now I'm done. I've, I've got everything here. This is my template. And so once that's completed, I'm going to go back out to Trello here to my home page, and you can see that home inspection training is here. My templates. And again, when I'm ready to assign this to the new sellers, I'm just going to click on the board. I'm going to go to, um, uh, copy board. I'm going to choose the workspace, in this case, Matthew. I'm going to change the name to Jones's uh, Repair Home Inspection. Uh, 
and then click on create. Now, when I go back out to Trello, I go to the workspace for the Joneses and it's here. And now I'm gonna go through and add straight from the home inspection addendum, the item to be repaired. And in the description, I may copy and paste from the home inspection report, the steps and the details, probably not the report as much as the addendum, because that's really all that matters. Uh, what needs to be done in this area? You can see the checklist already here. I'm gonna change the date to whatever date needs to be done for this task. And then I'm going to share with the seller by putting their email address in and then dragging their little icon here and leaving it on each space. And then I'm gonna click on automation and email reports. And I'm done, that's it. So hopefully that helps you out. I think it's a nice, clean, easy way to keep everybody on track. It definitely helps with um, organization and communication. And it lets you get an early notification of problems with the repairs early on and it sends your client reminders on a routine basis that those repairs had to be done so there's no question that they forgot if they're reading their emails and you're keeping track with them each day of the week so if you get two weeks in after ratification of that home inspection addendum you get an email that says everything's still in agreed upon repairs they've done no work you need to pick up the phone give them a call and say hey what can i do to move this along or help you out here so that's it. Thanks so much. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video so that uh, it helps me and my channel. Thanks so much. Bye.